Happy Sabbath, everyone. I don't think I need this. I hope I don't. Glad you're here today. We have we almost have a full church except for one little section right through here. It's a blessing to have folks in the church. That's, I believe that's what it's all about. Well, not what it's all about, but I'm glad you're here. Our scripture verse. The last part of the scripture verse is what I want to focus on today, but you know, we should focus on the whole verse because He is the vine and we are the branches. And if we abide in Him, we will bring forth much fruit. It says, for without me you can do nothing. I believe that that, that is what God has been trying to tell the human race since He made the human race. And I believe that that's where we went wrong. We thought we could do something without God. And in the beginning, of course, it was Adam and Eve. They believed, or they were, or Eve was tricked into believing that she could do something without God. And uh, ever since that time, we ha we can see what this after six thousand years of sin, how. Uh, things have gone without Jesus. I mean, our, our planet is in disarray. And I think that that is an understatement that I have just made. Our planet is in disarray. Uh, the, uh, the title of my sermon, and I, 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 I was trying to come up with it for all week, <laughs> and I finally got it this morning. But... Uh, Broken. The human race is broken without Christ. We are lost without Christ. And, and all through the Old Testament in the Jewish economy, God has tried to rally or bring Israel back to Him for uh, about 4,000 years. And finally, the last thing he says to uh, at the temple, when he left the temple for the last time, he says, your heart hurt. He says, your heart is left to you desolate. And I believe that he doesn't want to say that. He had no choice in to say that. The same as, as when the, the planet was flooded uh, in the great flood. He had no choice because it said men's hearts were continually evil. And I, I, I can't even imagine that. I mean, but if you look around today and you, you listen to the news or look at the headlines, uh, there's nothing but bad news. But I believe that that's sensationalism, that there, are some, there, 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 there is some good news out there. And, uh, and every now and then we, we come across the good news, and, and, and I think we should share good news. And our good news today is uh, Jesus. He's our Savior. And He, he has uh, brought us to where we are at such a time as this. And I am going to try to uh, read a little bit and talk a little bit. And sometimes I do both okay. But I want to ask God to, to, to help me as we uh, continue. Father, we thank You again for allowing us to come here to worship You. Father, we ask that you would uh, give us your Holy Spirit, that we would know which way to go, and that we would know how to treat each other. And Lord, I pray that you would be with me, that the words that come from me would be from you. Because, Father, the words that I have are, are not creative. You have the creative power, Lord, and we want to hear from you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Broken. You know, one thing that I would like to say that, and most of us, I believe, believe this. If you don't, then uh, Scripture teaches that Jesus is God. And one of the play, one of the one of my favorite places to go is Hebrews chapter one. 
And it starts out um, in verse 3. It says, Who being the brightness of His glory. Man, it's early. Oh, we use, usually it's 12 o'clock by the time I get up here. I got, I got a long time. Anyway, I'll... I, who being the brightness of His glory and the expressed image of His person and upholding all these things by the word of His power. When I hear talk like that, it says upholding all things by the word of His power. Who, whose word are we talking about here? If you read in uh, John chapter 1, it tells you who created planet Earth. And that's who we're talking about here. The word of His power. If you look at um, Psalm uh, 33 verses uh, 6 and 9, it says, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of His mouth. And verse 9 says, For He spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The, the creative power in God's Word contains the very thing that He speaks. That's, that's why God can't lie. So whatever comes out of His mouth has in it the thing that He speaks. You know, that very reason, I would like to, to, to say that for me, God being who He is, I should reverence God. The what we should have we should have a reverence for our God that we, we don't we don't have a reverence for our God. We look at our God. I mean, I have to speak for myself, and I and you can and, I, and I've been accused of not having reverence in the sanctuary. I get loud sometimes. I love I love talking to people. I like telling stories. I like to hear stories, and I just love talking. But we're talking about a being. All he has to do is speak, and it happens. And if I look, if I was God, and I'm not God, thank goodness I'm not. Because I, if he gave me control for about five minutes, I'd probably make the planet would probably not be here after five minutes, because I'd be so messed up. But if God decided that he didn't want to do this anymore. What he, what his son went through, and the, and the and the unappreciation that we show for what Jesus has done for the human race. He, if he just said, he he, could, he wouldn't have to snap his fingers. We would cease. We could cease to exist, and he could just move on, and we would never even know it. Should we reverence our God? This. Sanctuary is where we come to worship our God. Do we want to have casual conversation where we worship God? I mean, I have to ask myself that question because I do it. Ask yourself that question. I'm not going to police you out of here at the end of the sermon today. But I would, I want to begin reverencing God myself. And I'll leave it up to you. Well, the, this is where we worship our God. Our God who is the Creator, who spoke and it happened. This is where we worship Him. We love Him and, and He loves us. And, he, and he, he didn't send Jesus Christ to show us that He loved us. That's not why Jesus came, to show us that He loved us. He came because He loved us. Jesus cares so much for us. We're His reward. We are Jesus. He is our reward. But we have to remember that, that we are His reward. Jesus came and paid a price. I mean, when you go to the, to the store and buy something, you expect to leave out with it, don't you? I mean, you just don't leave it there. Well, Jesus, when Jesus came to earth and gave His life, He's expecting to, to, to leave with something. With a... With a uh, a product. And his product is people, the people that he loves. Amen. So we all believe that uh, Jesus is God. And I don't, 
believe that God has it in him and that he loves because he is love. He would not put the game back in the box. If you want to learn a little bit more about God and, and why we should reverence him, you should go read uh, Isaiah chapter 6. And that's uh, where Isaiah, that's where uh, Isaiah himself goes into God's throne room. And when he sees God, this, this holy man of God, who's a, a prophet of God, goes in and he sees God and he says, Woe is me. And I believe he fell straight back. <laughs> I mean, he probably, he, he probably lived, he didn't even have time to even think. It was like, oh, if you've ever seen anybody faint, you know, it, I believe he fainted. But that is the holiness of God. Our God is a God of love, but He's also a God of holiness. And He is not, at the end of time, going to overlook our uh, deformities. Not our deformities. Our, what's a good way to say it? I'm just going to use the word sin. He's not going to overlook our sin. Anyway, I want to talk a little bit about that today. I want to talk... I. I, I, I I want to talk about God's humanity. And I'm going to begin in John chapter 1. I don't know why I'm looking at the clock. i got plenty of time. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Word... Right here is Jesus Christ, and it says He is God. In um, Hebrews chapter 1, I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't have that, but I don't have it wrote down here. In Hebrews chapter 1, I do have it. It says, um, what does it say? It says, and this is God the Father talking. He says, But unto the Son He saith, Thy throne, O God. So God the Father calls Jesus Christ God. He says, Thy throne, O God. And Isaiah 9, 6, Unto us a son is given, unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on His shoulders. Somebody help me out. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. So, there's another verse in Scripture you can go to to see that uh, Jesus is God. Okay, it says in, uh, in John 1, chap uh, chapter 1, verse 2, The same was in the beginning with God. <coughs> Excuse me. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So what was made without God? Nothing. Nothing. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That was a man, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe he was not the light, that light, but was to, sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. What what man is left out in every man? I believe every man and woman. Every man was light lighted. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own. What does it mean when it says he came unto his own? He came unto his own. He came for the human race. And and his own received him not. But as many as received him to him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He gave them power to become the sons of God. If you're trying to become a son of God in your own power, read this verse closely. 
To them gave he power to become the sons of God, and even them that believe on his name. Now, I've heard it said that all we have to do is believe in Jesus. But if you believe in somebody, you believe what he believes. Does that stand to reason? You believe what he believes. So we believe in Jesus. We believe what, and he gave us a whole, a whole book, and he gave us a spirit of prophecy, which were born not of blood. Did I skip a verse? But as many as receive him, to him, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Verse thirteen, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man, but of God. I ask you a question. I ask myself this question a lot. And I've asked this question to the church before. Uh, could you pick when you were going to be born? Could you pick when you, who you were going to be born to? Could you pick where you were going to be? I mean, there, there's all these questions you could ask. No, we are... I like to say this, we are here for such a time as this. God has you here for a reason today. It is not because I'm up here. It's because God has something to say to you. And hopefully that God will say it. He will say it through me. And sometimes I believe that when the words leave the, my mouth or whoever's up here's mouth, sometimes when it gets to your ears, you hear what God wants you to hear. So, if anybody's up here speaking, and I say this about anybody who's up here, whether you understand them or not, God can still speak to you. He can speak to you through anybody. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to move on. And the word was, and I want you to focus on this verse right here, because we're going to spend a little bit of time in this area. Verse 14, it says, And the Word was made flesh. That word, that word flesh is S-A-R-X. I hope I got it. You know, I can cheat. I can look. I'm cheating. Yeah, S-A-R-X. Sarks. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now I want to transition to Romans. And let's not forget uh, John 5.15, especially the end of it where it says, we can do nothing without God. And I always say, and it's kind of silly, but I always say it, that what nothing is, we can do nothing without God. Uh, nothing is a zero with the edges rubbed out. Nothing without God. By the breath, uh, by our, our, He gives us our, our own breath. He, our hearts beat. Anyway, it's like I, I, was, I was leading up to something when I said, we can't pick where we're born, how we're born, where we're born, when we're born. God has chosen all that for us. And he has us here for a reason. Um, I, th I believe God does a lot more than we, than we know. I don't think that it was ever intended for us to live I, when, when God made Adam and Eve. And it, and it says in the spirit of prophecy that he made other places who did not sin. They had their own trees and they did not sin. And, and these are the audience to the world. They're watching this great sin experiment. And that's what it is. A great sin experiment. And this talking about Jesus and it says the Word was made flesh. It's called the great condescension. condescension the great condescension where, where God... If, if God wanted to, God could come down as God. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I've already said Jesus is God. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not 
trying to argue that point. But God, in, in all His infinite wisdom, knew... It's like the story I've told it before about the birds up north that didn't fly down south for the winter and they're freezing to death and the farmer sees them and he's got a big barn that's nice and warm. He's trying to get the birds into the barn and he's you know running around flopping his hands and the birds will not go into that barn. And he says, how can I get those birds into that barn? And he says, and he goes, oh. He says, the only way I can get those birds into that barn is to become one of the birds. And then I can show him how to go into the barn. Well, he realizes that's impossible. And I don't know the end of the story about the birds. They might have flew in there eventually, but that's what God has done for the human race. He became... He became man. It says, And the Word was made flesh. God can do what He wants to. I mean, God is God. If God wants to become a man, He can become a man. Anyway, I want to move on. I want to go to Romans chapter 5. And I've always said that Romans is my favorite book in the Bible. And I've always said that Romans chapter 5 is my favorite chapter. And verse 18 is my favorite verse, and I, I can stand by that. But I'm not going to begin in verse 18. You know, verse uh, 1 of, of Romans chapter 5 is the first blessing of justification by faith. When we are justified by God, it says we have peace with God. That is the first blessing is peace with God. It says in verse 2, it says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. That word grace is an incredible word. And it is... In the, Hebrew, in the Greek, it says the divine influence upon the heart. But that's not where it stops. It says the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection in the life. If you are blessed with grace and you don't reflect it out, then what good is the grace? God's grace is reflected out of each one of us. That is our witness to this world. Anyway, Moving on, I want to go up to verse 12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world. What man was that? And death by sin, so death passed upon all men. For that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the office so also, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through, I want you to remember that word, free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Now that word condemnation... When Adam, when when two people get together, or if two people get together and they have a, a sickness from the sins that they have have in their lives, they have a sickness, and they get together and they have a child, is that child guilty of the parent's sins? Are we guilty of Adam's sins? 
we are not guilty of Adam's sins, but we're under the condemnation. Because it says sin is passed through all men. Why? Because the whole human race was in Adam. Even Eve was in Adam. The whole human race was in Adam at one time. That's hard to imagine that the whole, the whole, the whole, uh, uh, every race, every male, female, every, you know, all over the whole world, that they were all in Adam. But that's that. That's the one great thing about God. Um, anyway, we can. It goes a lot deeper than that, and and time limits us into me expanding on that one. But but that's what the scriptures teach. Uh, Acts chapter seventeen verse twenty six says that we all came from one blood. I'm paraphrasing. You can read that. That's what it says. That every man on this. We all came from the same blood. And the only way that we can all come from the same blood, of course, is we came from Adam. And, you, and, I, and we talked about this in Sabbath school this morning. Uh, Indira, what does the word Adam mean? Mankind. Thank you. So, mankind. I, 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 it's amazing the things that you learn when you really look. That Adam means mankind. Okay, verse 18, favorite verse. There as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. That one man, was we have condemnation, comes from Adam. And that has come to the whole human race. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the righteousness of one, who would that be? Jesus. Jesus. By the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Free gift. Now we've had we've tried to exact, uh, show what a free gift is. I, I, Ray and I have done this so many times that I, I'm going to give Ray a free gift. Uh, we'll, we'll give you this, Ray. This is your free gift. Now, wait a minute. No, no. I'm going to give you a free gift. That is what Jesus has done for the human race. He has given. If Ray reaches out and takes it, that ain't what Jesus did for the human race. Jesus gave the free gift. It's, it belongs to you. You can do with it what you want to. You can do with it what you want to do with it. If Jesus gave everybody the free gift, does that mean that everybody's going to be saved? Why not? And that is what that is what Israel did. In, in the, I mean, they, they proved the point. Israel threw the gift away. They said, we can do it ourselves. Thank you. His own received him not. Amen. His own received him not. It is unbelief. Adam and Eve. Well, I don't know about Adam, but I know Eve did not believe God. So sin has passed to the human race. Adam, he just was, I believe he was just, he was uh, Twitter-pated. I believe that's the best word I can think of. He loved Eve so much that he, he just sinned. And that's speculation. And I don't speculate too much because it's not good. Because we can have a, a speculation party, and, and you know we, we want to stay with the Word of God. But Eve sinned deliberately. Free gift. Okay, now I want to go to uh, Romans chapter six. And verse I want to start with verse sixteen. Says, know ye not that whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. And I'm going to read that in the uh, New English translation. It says, 
Do you not know that if you present yourselves as obedient slaves, you are the slave of the, of the one that you obey, either of sin resulting in death or obedience resulting in life? So whoever you present yourself to is the one that you're going to obey. There is no middle ground. You present yourself to Christ or by default.